Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and I hope this video finds you all doing well. Today we have got a couple of news stories in the world of PC gaming hardware, and also a couple of PC gaming news stories themselves. First, we'll be talking about AMD Ryzen, which has got a new adjust update to help with some issues booting into Linux distros. Also, we've got the 5700 series of GPUs getting 4K support for applications like Netflix, and also some PC gaming stories on No Man's Sky getting Vulkan, and also on some hope, some some positive news about PS4 exclusives, which hopefully means some more of them will be coming to the PC later on in the future. But first, today's video is brought to you by LevelGo.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for under $16, Microsoft Office 2019 for $80, and Microsoft Office 2016 for under $40. And if you use my coupon codes at checkout, you can save an additional 22% off of Windows 10 Pro, or 16% off of any software you pick up over there, or now you can get 3% off of the entire website with the code PDS3 at checkout. So be sure to use these coupon codes with the links down in the description below. So first up, we will be talking about AMD Ryzen and the 3000 series of CPUs, which, you know, got a very warm reception when it was released. I think a lot of people are excited to see them really competing with Intel now in the mainstream and even beating them in a lot of cases, especially in terms of price to performance and also especially in terms of core count. 3000 series has been great, but it has not been without a couple of issues, most of which have been resolved through Agessa and BIOS updates here or there. Um, but one that has been waiting to get fixed is with Linux and Ubuntu, where a lot of users trying to use Ryzen 3000 series CPUs were having trouble actually booting into their operating system. However, thankfully, due to the latest BIOS update, which has the latest Agessa standard, which is 1.0.0, dot three ABB, that's a hell of a mouthful, will hopefully resolve some of the issues for people running Ubuntu 19.04 and other Linux distros out there. So hopefully this will help resolve some of those issues for those people. If you're a Linux user and you've already downloaded this update, um, this firmware update for the Ryzen 3000 and it's working for you or otherwise, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, it is also listed that this is meant to improve system performance, stability, and storage device compatibility. So all around, um, you know, good information good things for Linux users who may have been having issues over the last month or so on the new chipset from AMD. Or I shouldn't say new chipset. Technically, it's the same chipset. It's still AM4. So I misspoke there. The new CPUs from AMD on Zen 2. Continuing along with some AMD news, uh, they've got Netflix 4K support now for 5700 series of GPUs, which is good if you are a 5700 owner and you wanted to take advantage of 4K streaming at the desktop, which still does require a few other things. This is something that was introduced a few years ago, this whole DRM thing, where at first you like you needed the latest Intel processors and then the first gen Ryzen's, I believe, uh, supported as well, but it's kind of like a hardware-based DRM, and it all plays into the Microsoft Play Ready 3.0 system. Um, at least this does here. So there are a few other requirements that you need besides just owning a 5700 series GPU. There's a couple other things you could own. You could also have an Intel CPU and be running off of that. NVIDIA GPUs work with it. Ryzen CPUs work with it now too, um, as well as the G series of Ryzen CPUs. So if you have integrated Vega graphics, those should be able to work as well. Uh, but now the 5700 cards kind of uh, meets their video requirements for it, but you will also need to have at least 25 megabit per second or faster internet, a 4K monitor, and a premium subscription with Netflix, which gives you access to the 4K streaming. And then your monitor and your cable does need to be HDCP 2.2 compliant. Um, HDCP 2.2 is basically the highest standard that you need in order to be able to play 4K content. And the reason that they really do this all at the end of the day is so that you can't go ahead and just, um, you know, watch a movie and record it, you know, pixel by pixel and then upload it online to a pirating website and people can then watch the whole thing in 4K res and there's no reason for 4K Netflix. So this is kind of something they have to do in order to protect the content, but also in order to protect Netflix so that the content creators that have their content streaming on Netflix um, don't hit, you know, throw a fit and say, hey, why, are you, why is everyone stealing all of our movies off your service? It's too easy to steal off of there. Well, you need to be able to be, meet some of these requirements in order to be able to do it. So at least thankfully now 5700 series, 5700 cards can uh, 
handle it as well. But now we're getting into some PC gaming news story, and we will start off with Hello Games and No Man's Sky, which uh, started off really badly when it first came out, admittedly. Uh, if I, I barely even touched it before getting a refund. A lot of people um, thought it was absolutely awful, and it was. It was terrible at launch. Um, they lied about a lot of stuff leading up to it, and features that they had promised were not there, or... Um, maybe, maybe we're going to come at a later date, but thankfully since then it has been patched a lot and a lot of people think, seem to think that it's in a pretty good state right now and they're actually getting a big content patch uh, today. Probably by the time this video is going live it'll be available. It's called No Man's Sky Beyond, which is adding in a couple of things, um, most notably VR is getting added in, a multiplayer mode, and then also the one that excites me the most is the Vulcan API. So previously it was only running on OpenGL, but now it's going to support the Vulkan API as well. So you would hope that that is going to give smoother overall game performance for not only AMD, who does seem to benefit more from the Vulkan API in recent years, but also NVIDIA as well, um, as OpenGL is just not a great API to use for games. It's very, very rarely used nowadays. You would usually see most companies using DX11 or DX12 or Vulkan, and in most cases, Vulkan has been incredible in the games that I've tested in. Only a couple of games where it was not great, um, like World War Z, it had a lot of hitching issues, and then there was one other game, uh, The Talos Principle, which I believe has been in the beta phase for like five years for Vulkan support, so it's never really gotten ironed out on that particular game, but World War Z still has issues using Vulkan. Um, and, but hopefully No Man's Sky does not fall into the same, well, pitfalls, and the, drive, the update will be out Later today, not the driver, the update for the game. So go ahead and check it out. And let me know if Vulcan is running better for you on No Man's Sky, no Man's Sky Beyond once it releases today. Um, last up, we'll be talking about Quantic Dream, which is a developer, uh, formerly a first-party developer for Sony. All their games were on the PlayStation. Very narrative-driven games. Not a whole lot of gameplay to speak of in titles like uh, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, Detroit Become Human. Three games which I have played already on um, various different Sony consoles and enjoyed all of them. Incredible titles and they have been slowly been coming out on the PC on the Epic Game Store exclusively, which is unfortunate. But they've been coming out one at a time. They've also been putting out demos. So they've been putting their best foot forward. The demos are available now for uh, at least two of the games, Detroit Become Human and Beyond Two Souls. Um, the other game, Detroit Become Human, is becoming is going to be coming out at a later date. Uh, but Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain are both out now. I believe they're $20 each. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and then you can also try them, try the demo to see if the uh, the gameplay works for you. But the real story here is that the sales have actually been very good, and Quantic Dream revealed that Sony is actually the ones that did give them permission to release their catalog onto the PC. So what I'm getting from this is that I'm hoping that Sony has, since they gave in here and said, okay, let's give these one guys a chance to release their games on the PC. You know, if they see that the sales are there and they see that it's not impacting them negatively in terms of competition with Microsoft and the Xbox One, then I would hope that maybe in the future they'll consider releasing some other titles onto the PC as well. Quantic Dream had this to say in a statement regarding Sony. They said, We always had a great relationship with Sony PlayStation. They have always been very supportive of my work, and we have always been very loyal to them in return. So we had a very open talk about all this, and they allowed us to release our catalog of titles onto the PC. So, yeah, they basically they had to go to Sony and ask, but Sony left them, and hopefully they do release more games in the future on the PC. I mean, I would love to see God of War in every, you know, Uncharted game released, you know, come out onto the PC, uh, because PC is not really a, a direct competition to Sony. Xbox is a competition with Sony, not necessarily the PC as a platform, even though, um, you know, most games are running on a, on Microsoft operating system. I don't really view that as a direct competition to Sony, so I, I don't really see any negatives for them releasing their games onto the PC in the same way that the Xbox is doing now as well. And just like, you know, with Xbox, where they started out releasing one game, like with Gears Remaster onto the PC, I just hope that this, you know, kind of sets a sets things in motion to have more Sony exclusives on the PC, specifically the Uncharted series. Um, they did also mention here in this article on DSOG um, that Death Stranding, the latest game from Hideo Kojima, who formerly worked on the Metal Gear Solid series, um, that that game was actually recently removed from the PS4 exclusive game list, and it was actually originally revealed 
as a PS4 and PC title, so with it now being removed from that exclusive game list, maybe we'll get to see Death Stranding come out on the PC as well. I don't think we'll see it at the same day as it comes out on console, but maybe somewhere further down the road, and that would be awesome to see because I love pretty much everything Hideo Kojima has done up till now, the entire Metal Gear Solid franchise before he left. Uh, so Death Stranding looks incredible from what I've seen so far. I don't really know what you do in it yet. I just know you carry a lot of things on your back and you play as Norman Reedus. And those two things can't be bad. I mean, I don't know why I want to wander around in the wilderness carrying things on my back as, as Daryl Dixon, but sure as shit, I, I, I want to. And I would love to do it on the PC. And max graphics, 4K, 120 hertz, all that good shit. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please leave me your thoughts, as always, down in the comments below on all the news stories we covered today. Of course, sources will be linked down in the description, as I always do. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you've been here for a while, ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a news video as soon as it goes up live here on the channel. And stay tuned for tomorrow's video, as we'll be taking a look at the Red Devil, the Power Color Red Devil 5700 XT up against the Gigabyte Gaming OC RTX 2060 Super 2 uh, 450-ish dollar graphics cards head-to-head -head should be a good one. I'll see you for that video.